Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to try to show you how to find the critical points uh, uh, of a function using the quotient, quotient rule here to get the derivatives here. Um, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and uh, thank you for watching. Let's see, for this function right here, which has got first thing you want to recognize is there are no domain errors. This is kind of a trick question. You usually see x squared minus 1 here, but the reality is, is this is x squared plus 1. A couple ways to think about this, but there is no way, no x's are going to make 0 out of the denominator. Um, it's a parabola up 1. It doesn't hit the x-axis. That's one way to think about it. If you square something, it's positive or 0, and if you add, there's no way you're back at 0. So just make sure you keep in mind that this is kind of a trick question. There is no zeros down here, so there's no domain error at this moment. Um, let's take the derivatives. Use the quotient rule. I had a calculus teacher that always used to say low d high minus high d low. Um, that's basically the quotient rule of saying the derivative of the bottom, uh, excuse me, the bo um, low, um, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. And those are numerators and denominators. I like to use top and bottom. Sorry about that. So if I go low, the way I think about it is low d high, derivative of the t one on top, d high minus high d low. Derivative of the denominator is 2x there, over low squared. I always encourage my students not to, but not to expand the binomial down here, not to mess with this. Sometimes it cancels, sometimes we reduce it, just leave it like it is, and we like it in factored form. We need to clean up the top. There's going to be some like terms if you look at it carefully, just with distribution in mind. We're going to have a 4x squared plus 4 minus an 8x squared on top. Down on the bottom, still the same. Again, do not expand these. Keep them in factored form. Negative <clears throat> 4x squared plus 4 looks to be the numerator in this case, denominator. Still, x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Now, I see somebody's distributed a 4, as I like to say it, and I also want to take out the negative that's in front here to be easier to see. I need to ask, this is important, critical points are the derivative equal to 0. This is what I'm trying to find out. I am trying to find out where the critical points are. And the critical points are where the derivative of the function equals 0 and any domain errors and domain issues or domain errors as, I, as, as I'll say. So keep this in mind. Those are the critical points. So here's my derivative. Can I see what the numer what x value makes the numerator 0? As I like to tell my kids, we're always looking for what makes 0. It's WMZ for short. What x value will make 0 out of that? So we, this is why we like things in factored form. If I take the 4 out, if I factor the 4 out, I'm going to get a positive x squared, double check, yep. And a negative 1, I'm going to double check that. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. I have factored correctly. It only takes 2 seconds to double check it. It would be smart, it would be wise to double check that all the time. All right, what makes 0 on the top? That's where the zeros are. If I want to know where this equation equals 0, then it's the numerator being 0. That's what I'm looking for. You might be able to see difference of squares. We've got x is equal to plus or minus 1. So I have critical points at the zeros of the derivative, which are plus x values of plus or minus 1. Okay? There is no domain errors. There is no domain errors, so these are the only critical points. These are the only critical points. It's supposed to be a CP there. Let's try another one. Let's try another one here. I've got another equation. It's t over t minus 2, another function of t this time. Also, it wants to know the absolute. This is a typical question right when you start this section in calculus. It wants to know the absolute maximum, the absolute max, and the absolute min of uh, uh, this function in this domain, in this interval. Okay, So here's the key to doing this. You need to basically take the derivative as we've done before. We're going to take the derivative and we're going to find the critical points because a critical point is where the function equals zero. So if I have a function that maybe looks like this at one point, 
this is where the graph, e, the tangent line slope equals zero. This is where f of x, f uh, derivative of x will equal zero. So this is the visual in mind. Critical points, maybe we'll find what we call local or relative maxes or local or relative mins where the slope of the tangent line is zero. In other words, the derivative of x, sorry about that, of x is equal to zero. Also, if I'm given an interval and I'm asked for the absolute max and min, well, the critical point could be the highest point between maybe three and five here, okay? But also the end points could be the maximum height. So we're just trying to find where the highest y value is and the lowest y value is. That's what I mean by height. So let's get the derivative. F prime of t. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. Low d high, nice easy one. Derivative of top is one, so it makes it nice. Minus high d low. Again, the derivative is one on the denominator or the bottom. Also, please do not expand this. You cannot see what makes zero. You cannot see what makes zero. So for this numerator here, we gotta clean that up. It looks like I'm gonna have a t minus two minus t over t minus two quantity squared, quantity squared. Okay, so t minus t, you can see those are gonna go bye-bye. I'm left with just the negative two on top. I'm already asking myself what makes zero out of the top. What variable value will make zero out of the top? And that's the key way to think about it. There is no variable. Negative two will never be zero. My question will still always work. That's why I like the, the question, what makes zero? What will make zero out of this? There's no variable to do. So there is no critical point for the zero, for this equals zero, for the numerator equals zero, there is no critical point. But down below, there is a critical point at t equal two, t equal two. So this is really important to know that this is a critical point. In the context of this particular problem, two is not in the interval in question. So I do not have to worry about plugging and chugging two into this main function. I can't even, because that is a domain error on the main function. But if I was to do this correctly, I would be looking at t values, t values, Okay, and I would be looking at the plug and chug of them, as I like to say, or the height of them, or the y values, okay, for this problem, for this problem. So what I would be looking at, as I scroll down too far there, okay, I want to plug in the 3, I want to plug in the 5, and I want to see what these values are. I technically would be plugging in the critical point of 2 as well to double check that if that, to, to see if that actually produces a height, a y value, and maybe it is a min or max. There are some graphs that'll do that. This one does not have that one. Two is out of the interval, and also two is a domain error of the main function. So I'm only gonna plug in the interval's uh, front point or first point, excuse me, beginning point, and ending point. So if I put in a three, if I put in a three, I get three divided by three minus two, three minus two or one, so I get a value of three. If I put in a five, I get five over five minus two, five minus two, so then that is three, and we have five thirds, five thirds. So I have only two values, one of them's obviously the max and one's the min unless they're identical. This is the max height for this particular part of this function, and this is the min height. Again, if I had a critical, excuse me, if I had a, um, yeah, if I had a critical point, clean that up a little bit. If I had a critical point um, that was in between here, that was a, uh, in the interval, and it was the lowest or highest, then that would be the absolute max and min. Let me show you what this graph looks like to give you some visual context. I'm just gonna come over to a graphing uh, uh, function, a graphing program that I've created over the years. So what I'm going to do is type in the x, the t value, which is going to be x here. I'm going to go divide by parentheses x minus 2 to take a look at this graph. Hit return. And we were looking for values between 3 and values between 5. So if you look at those between these two points right here, 
the highest value between on this interval between 3 and 5, the highest value was 3, and the lowest value was 5 thirds. There were no values in between possible critical points. Maybe it went up and down or down, lower and up. Possible critical points. There were none in between, so this is, in this context, the highest and lowest points. I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I'll be doing more of these videos on critical points because I think this is where calculus really becomes a bit more interesting in applications to graph and business problems and engineering problems, etc. Thank you for listening.